Are you tired of opening up Odoo and seeing sales orders with missing delivery dates or products that were created on accident? This exact situation used to be one of my biggest headaches. And it probably goes without saying a huge headache for a lot of my clients as well. Then I started applying the principles of form control and idiot proofing. Now we're definitely not here to call anyone an idiot. We're just trying to make it easy for our users to get the information in that we need inside of Odoo. So in this video, I'm going to show you the three step process that I follow and the easy tools inside of Odoo that you can use to make mistakes like these a thing of the past. I call it the err method. That's the sound my boss used to make when he would find mistakes like this. We could also call it the RRR method, but I don't want you to confuse it with the awesome movie that came out a few years ago. And I don't want you to be disappointed because there's no animal fight scene at the end of this video. Sorry, I don't have the budget for that. So let's get into the first R of the R method. The very first thing we want to do in our forms in Odoo is reduce. Odoo forms can be pretty broad and there may be a lot of fields that your company just doesn't use. I believe Albert Einstein said it best in his wildly popular Discourse on Odoo. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. Now, as poor an Einstein impression as that was, the principle is accurate. Every field in a form should be providing value to your company. If it's not, we need to get rid of it or hide it because whoever's interacting with the form on a regular basis is either going to be confused by that field being there or they're going to be spending time trying to fill it out when really it doesn't bring any value to your company. We're using sales orders as our example, right? I'm going to come through and I'm just going to slash and burn on this form. I do need a customer, but an expiration date, I don't really need that for my company. So I'm going to go into developer mode. And then we're going to come into studio and I'm going to say expiration date. I don't really need it. So I'm going to come down here and I could remove it from view. But because dependencies are such a big part of Odoo, we're just going to go ahead and make this invisible all the time. The other nice thing about making it invisible is I can always bring it back if I need to. So I can go into view, show invisible elements, and I can come back to this expiration date and make it so that it is visible again. So that's if I want to remove a field completely. But what if I only want to show that field sometimes or only to some people? For example, I may want to have an expiration date only if the price list that I've selected is a certain price list. To do that, I would come into expiration, come up to invisible, and I'd say this is going to be conditionally invisible. Now I'm going to come to the price list and I'm going to select the price lists where I want expiration to be invisible. So we're going to say price list is in and we're going to say default because I don't have an expiration there. For my other expiration price list, I want it to be visible. So we'll go ahead and confirm that and close out and let's test this real quick. So coming into this, I select default and my expiration goes away, which is exactly what we want to keep people focused and make it easy for them to do this right. We may also want to make it so that expiration only shows up to certain groups of people with the right access in Odoo. Maybe it's something sensitive. Maybe it's something that we only want certain people to change. So we'd come into studio here, click on expiration, and we'd come down on the left and we can say allow visibility to groups or we can forbid visibility to certain groups. So with this, we would come in find the group that we want here and allow them to see it. Einstein would be very pleased with you right now. And real quick, before we move on, if you've enjoyed the content here so far and found it useful, consider joining my weekly mailing list, which is going to give you more tips and tricks, news, best practices, all the above. It's linked in the description below. And if you want to like and subscribe at the same time, that'd be great too. Now it's time for the next R in the R method. The next thing we're going to focus on is restricting what our employees can do in each form. And sorry, Einstein doesn't have a quote relative to this. I guess even he made mistakes sometimes. Going back to our original example, an employee could be going pretty quickly, trying to type in a product, say, cheer, and they accidentally type this. Well, they're trying to hurry. They tab through and Odoo automatically creates this product called chair, which is not terribly helpful. 
Now, the same thing could happen with our customers. An employee could be trying to type in a customer's name. They add an additional letter or a number or something else and just tab through. And if you've experienced this, you've seen the mess that this can create very quickly. And who generally has to clean up those messes? Well, I think we both know the answer to that question. So let's stop it from happening. So we have two simple options that can help us out here. Back in our sales order example, we want to come into studio, make sure we're in developer mode again. And well, now I need to get rid of this real quick. And we're going to go into studio, go to customer. And if we scroll down to the left, we can see that we have a few options here. Okay. I can disable opening. I can disable all creation, or I can simply say, well, I don't want somebody to be able to just create this on the fly. I want them to have to open the form and create and edit it. Let's see how this looks in practice just real quick. So coming into this, I'm going to say disable create option. When we close out and come in, I can say, this is a customer. I can try and tab through, but it's going to bring this up and show me you're trying to create a record right now. It's not going to let me just fly through this. Now, say we want to lock this down even further. We're going to go into studio and go to views, form. And now I can go into the customer and say, I don't really want anybody creating a customer on the fly. So we're going to say disable creation. That checks these two other boxes. And now when I come in and try and take this path, it only gives me the available records. It doesn't give me the option to create anything here. And just to be clear, to apply this correctly, we don't want to make things super hard for our employees. We just want to make sure that they do things correctly. So if they're meaning to create a customer, it takes them through it deliberately. If they're trying to create a product and we want them to be able to do that here, it takes them through that deliberately. It doesn't allow them to just tab through and accidentally create things that we don't want them to create. Now it's time for the final R in the er method. The last thing we want to do with our forms is require certain information. And yes, Einstein did have a quote about this. When speaking about fields you shouldn't require, he said, to require this is as unreasonable as to demand that a hen lay a crowing egg. Okay, it doesn't fit super well, but we can't expect Einstein to solve every problem for us. Now, we may only want to require certain information sometimes. We may want to say, well, if this field has this value or if this field is set, then I want you to require that information. But either way, we want to make it, again, very easy for our users to know, you have to give me this information. I need this when we're putting in a sales order. Thankfully, yet again, Odoo has made this very easy for us to set up. We're back in our sales orders and we're going to go into studio yet again and make sure you're in developer mode. With this now, we can come in and say, I want to require an expiration date now. I want to always see this. So for this to work properly, we're going to say this expiration date is required if we have the price list that makes it visible. So looking at this again, this is invisible if we have default US dollar. So we're going to say this is conditionally required and we're going to say the price list is not in default US dollar. That way it is required whenever the price list is showing our expiration date. We'll confirm that real quick and then we'll go test it. Let's try this out real quick to make sure that it's working. Price list is going to be other expiration and we're gonna say our expiration date is not set. I go to save this and it's telling me you need to give me an expiration date here. But if I switch that back to default and try and save, it's not giving me that notification. So that's the err method in a nutshell. It's really not terribly complicated. And the tool that you're using is just drag and drop and point and click. Nothing too complicated. But just because it's fairly straightforward doesn't mean you should ignore this. Having proper form control can make all the difference in your company, both in user frustration, and honestly, in your own frustration. So make sure you're applying the err method in your life. And if you liked what you saw here and you wanna do some more studio customizations to FormView, go ahead and check out the video here. 
All that being said, if you liked what you saw here and you could use a little bit more help, go ahead and grab some time with me. The link is in the description below.